us here. What does it take to walk in the power of God? What does it take to be a conduit releasing the possibilities of the spirit to the nations? What does it take to bring the counsel of Jesus to the nations? What does it take to be an epitome of the blessing of the Lord? What does it take to find favor with God and with men? The answers to these and more are shrouded in this mystery called the ways of God. He can show men his ways. We can feast on the patterns of the spirit and with them manifest wonders in this life. Prayer point number one. Father, open my eyes. Open my eyes. Open my eyes. Someone cry to your maker. Shake it, take it, take it, take it. Open my eyes. He said, call unto me and I will answer. I will show you great and mighty things. Zaria, are you praying? Abuja, are you praying? Koinonia Global. Cry. You may be a man of God, an apostle, a prophet, an evangelist. Hear me. We are in the days of his power. There is a mighty awakening across the nations of the earth. Open my eyes. Show me the keys to kingdom wealth and prosperity. Open my eyes. Show me the keys to operating the healing anointing. Open my eyes. Show me the keys to restoration. By your spirit I will rise from the ashes of defeat. The resurrected King is resurrecting me. In your name I come alive. The resurrected King is resurrecting me. Spirit I will rise from the ashes of defeat. Hear me. Listen. I asked you the first question. That is it true that God can come to indwell men? Question two. Do you believe that the anointing of the Spirit upon a man can cause you to operate and manifest dimensions of possibilities that are not given to mortal men that this engracing we call the anointing it says I have found my servant David Psalm 89 and verse 20 that with my holy oil have I anointed him I've anointed him whom my hand will lift are we together now 21 it says that the enemy shall not exert upon him Verse 23, it says, I will afflict, I will beat down his foes before his face and plague them that hate him. The last verse, it says, but my faithfulness and my mercy shall be with him and in my name shall his horn, his horn is his authority, his influence, his relevance shall be exalted. That's why I raised that song. In your name I come alive to declare your victory the resurrected king is resurrecting me hear me you see the thing about the dealings of god with men please listen carefully the thing about the dealings of god with men is that at any level you can start with god and i'm not just talking of new birth at any level spiritually but the first law of transformation is that you must admit the limitations of your current state in pride transformation is an impossibility you have to first acknowledge that i am limited 
may be a man of God, may be a businessman, but my current frame of reference is not, pro is not producing the possibilities. Then God can come to you with his mercy. When I cry to God, I cry as though I have not known him. I cry as if I do not know anything about the anointing. I am amazed at our arrogance in the body of Christ over the little that we see. Whereas there are virgin dimensions in the spirit to explore. The current context of our definition of strength cannot host the revival coming. It will take superior manifestations of the power of God. If it is the nations we want to take. Uh -uh. We must quit this blind arrogance and begin to pursue with sincerity. We have tried, but not enough. The current idea of what we call strength and power and results in the body of Christ, I submit to you, it is not notable enough to compel the nations. It says where the carcasses are. Do you know what it means to make diplomats, to make nations, to make kings? To make people from the Middle East, you know what it takes to turn their attention from their busy schedules to look at Jesus? It's in you, Lord. It's in you, Lord. We know there's more that's found in you. It's in you, Lord. It's in you, Lord. Listen, with all due respect, we're about to pray. We talk a lot about prosperity in the body of Christ and I respect all that God has done. But how many of us can give to nations and still be able to sleep sound? We are not there yet. Let us be sincere with ourselves. Being blessed enough for yourself is not really the blessing. Until you can give to the kingdom in a notable way as though it's a government giving and it does not affect you you are not yet there the ones who are there are lots of unbelievers commendably there but the church needs to rise look at the way we beg for money we manipulate for money it's unnecessary we must contend for superior levels many years ago the lord revealed to me that there are seven dimensions of kingdom wealth that he was bringing to the body of Christ and at the time he revealed to me he told me we were only on level three three you will see men who will stand like nations whose lives will be a mystery economically when they speak it will be a combined echo of the spirit and resources and some of you this is what God is preparing you to become but this version of you cannot host that glory no not with your life still mad with a lot of carnality and greed and just wanting cars and houses no the kind of end time wealth we are talking about is beyond i'm wearing a rolex i'm wearing this i'm wearing designers that's wonderful but we are talking about nations saved in one day using the resources of the kingdom how about evangelists and pastors we preach for hours and only two souls will come out. That is wonderful, but it's too slow. In, in the world today, on average, I, I, the last I checked, and I've shared it here, the statistics shows that the Christian faith only accounts for about 2.6 billion people out of the over 8 billion people now on earth. That is too small and is too slow. If it takes 100 years or 200 years to win 2.6 billion people, <laughs> then it means we are doing a bad job. Minus those who die, minus those who are born, and the 2.6 includes backsliders on serious Christians mixed together. And yet he wants the gospel to reach all the 8 billion. There must be an accelerator factor. How are we going to get to the remaining over 5.4 billion who must hear about Jesus ladies and gentlemen provided we are still fighting one another I am for Paul and Apollos all that is a demonic distraction to waste our time because none of us I have taught here sustains the ability to host the global harvest I say it respectfully to the body of Christ any individuals who believe either as an individual or as a group 
or as a ministry as a church we can only do our best it is only in unity that that mission will happen in this unity our inefficiencies laced with pride will become glaring and it will become the biggest impedance to our making that progress even more than demon spirits we must come to a place of respectful admission that our individual efforts can only go so far it is the collective effort of the church the ecclesia that church from asia to america to the caribbeans to the middle east to africa to europe together as a united body and unity does not mean uniformity we don't have to do the same thing we must just be guided by one cause that when the trumpet is blown in Zion, everybody can hear and everybody can take their battle formation, acting according and within the measure of the grace allotted. This is what God calls for. Again, I will refer you to my message, Redefining Revival. Hallelujah. Are we together now? Yes. I really believe in what God is doing, but I submit to you, our current result cannot host the new that is coming. The Bible says you cannot put new wine. You know what Jesus was talking about? That you cannot put new wine where? In an old wine skin. That means every, he said, and he, tell, he tells us why. That if you put new wine in an old wine skin, it is going to tear it. So every time God wants to tear the old wine skin, he puts a bit of the new wine so that the old will tear and give room for a complete vessel. If you want the new wine, what's that song? Where there is new wine, there is new power. Sing it for me. I lay down my me the old you cannot carry this new that is coming the old businessman cannot carry the apostolic order of prosperity that is coming the greedy you cannot carry it the stingy you the competitive you cannot carry this dimension of anointing because there is a requisite level of compassion you must have to be trusted with the grace that heals nations are we together that leads me to the next prayer point. No eye has seen, no ear has heard what God has prepared for me. Here's the prayer. So I submit to his work in me till Christ be formed in me. No eye has seen, no ear has heard what God has prepared Are you ready to pray this second prayer? Lord, the circumcision that must happen to me to be able to host the new that you are bringing, that circumcision of the flesh, that circumcision in my heart, Lord, let it happen. Expand me. Everything that needs to be done in my life to carry these superior levels of grace, prosperity, wisdom, influence, access. Let it happen. Someone is praying. You are a kingdom financier, pray. It is not just give me, give me, give me. Your first prayer is make me. Make me before give me. Don't just pray and say give me billions. No, this version of you will be an ineffective and inefficient steward. Walk upon my heart so that my hands will be faithful. Walk upon my heart so that my bank account will be faithful. Walk upon my heart so that my sermons will be accurate. Walk upon my heart so that the results will be authentic.
in the name of